What is not seen in ocular motor nerve palsy was the question of the AIMS examiner in AIMS May 2018. All of you know for the light reflex you require the sphincter pupillae to constrict because of the ocular motor nerve fibers uh, leading to the meiosis when you throw the light into the eye. So that is light reflex will get affected. Ptosis will be there because levator palpebrae superioris is being supplied by the oculomotor nerve. Dilatation of the pupil will be there. There will be a lateral gaze but not upward. Downward gaze will be there is what you need to remember. So why the eye will be displaced downward whenever the oculomotor palsy is there? Because the superior oblique which is innervated by the trochlear and uh, the, um, the trochlear nerve, it is the one which is unantagonized if the oculomotor is paralyzed and that will superior oblique will push the eye down and if oculomotor is not there to oppose it, the eye will go into a downward. So it is out and downward is what you need to remember. So what is this structure which is in the electron microscopic image. Can you please punch whether the voice is loud and clear? Very happy to see 178 online students across the country. So doctor, secretory vesicles. So all the subcellular organelles, you should be very sure to recognize them electron microscopically. But this kind of questions only situationally, you have to use a common sense and goli marna padega. So secretory vesicles like hormones, neurotransmitters, everything are all packaged in the secretory vesicles in the Golgi apparatus which look like this if you do the electron microscopy is what you have to basically remember. There is a loss of the flexion of the interphalangeal joint of the thumb when the patient had a supracondylar fracture. So first of all, the flexor pollicis longus is supplied by which nerve and whose injury lead to loss of the flexion of the interphalangeal joint of the thumb uh, is a very important question. It is the anterior interosseous nerve which is the branch of the median nerve. It is the one which goes and supplies the Flexor pollicis longus, the one which is leading to the interphalangeal flexion in uh, um, of the thumb is what you need to basically remember. So it flexes the distal phalanges of the thumb is what you need to ultimately remember. It goes and inserts onto the base of the distal phalanx of the thumb and flexor pollicis longus is supplied by anterior interosseous nerve of the median is what you need to ultimately remember. So this is how the patient looks like. He will be unable to flex the interphalangeal joint of the thumb if the anterior interosseous nerve is injured is what you have to basically remember. So this is called the square pinch. If you ask him to pinch now, this is called as square pinch of the right hand because of a lesion in the anterior nerve with which he is unable to flex the interphalangeal joint of the thumb. This is the normal hand. This is the abnormal hand which is where the paralysis is seen. Tomorrow once more in AIMS exam or NEED PG similar image will be given and uh, examiner will ask you um, what is the nerve involved. You should be confident to answer it. Identify the structure in the inner ear which is being pointed and shown to you. So this is the incus. So you should remember if you look at the ossicles, you have a stapes, incus and malleus. The stapes will put its foot against um, the window and this is how the inner ear structures are all aligned with each other. Once more, this is a pure situational intelligence, nothing by preparation in exam, right? Now, this is a very important question, doctor. 
you should be 100% sure about the cerebellar histology, cerebellar anatomy in the neuroanatomy on which invariably every AIMS examiner is going to ask you a question. Purkinje cells of the cerebellum relates to where? It is the dentate nucleus, the deep nucleus of the cerebellum to which the Purkinje cells will be relaying. If you look at the cerebellar efferent pathway, cerebellum se bahar nikal ke cortex ki taraf jane wale efferent pathway jo bhi hai, how is that? The cerebellar efferents are formed by the axons of the Purkinje cells is what you need to remember. They synapse with the cerebellar nuclei. And the cerebellum's efferent leaves the cerebellum and uh, to what all the structures it will go and uh, connect. It connects with the red nucleus at the midbrain level. It connects with the thalamus. It connects with the vestibular nucleus which is there in the medulla and it connects with the reticular formation in the midbrain. So there are all the connections of the cerebellum's efferent is what you need to basically appreciate. I'll take five minutes of your time to quick to give you a quick briefing on cerebellum very easy to understand because there's one cerebral cortex to cerebelli, there is one spinal cord, there is one brainstem. Kya neuroanatomy? Nothing. Only if you have a clear understanding, picture in mind, what is connected to what. A electrical connections ke jaise hai. Pahli bar it is a amusement. Second time it should be routine. Third time you should be like a neurologist to tell the diagnosis, right? Cerebellar cortex has got folia. And each of these folium contains a core of white matter covered superficially by the gray matter. And if you make a section in the gray matter, you find uh, typically three important layers. Molecular layer, Purkinje cell layer, granular cell layer are the three important layers. In the molecular layer, you have two types of cells called stellate cells, basket cells. Purkinje cell layer has got Purkinje cells. Granular layer has got granular cells and also Golgi cells. That's what you need to first understand. Now, inside this, uh, what is outside in cerebellum? Outside gray matter hai, inside white matter hai, white matter ke under, you have islands of gray matter and those islands of gray matter are called deep cerebellar nuclei. So what are those deep cerebellar nuclei? You have a emboliform nucleus because the shape, ovoid shape. Globose nucleus, fastigial nuclei and dentate nucleus out of these four. Dentate is the largest cerebellar deep nucleus is what you have to fundamentally understand. Now, these nuclei receive afferents. People bring information to this nuclei. Who are they? Purkinje cells will come bring information to this nuclei. Then the climbing and mossy fibers also, they bring excitatory uh, they are excitatory fibers on this nuclei. Whereas Purkinje cells are inhibitory to this nuclei. And uh, from this nuclei, where will the efferent will go out? The efferent will go out of the cerebellum and uh, it will go out through superior cerebellar peduncle and inferior cerebellar peduncle. It will go out of the cerebellum. That is what you have to basically Remember, right? You got some gross idea. Don't worry. Uh, once uh, I stimulate you about cerebellum, sensitize you about cerebellum in this uh, uh, brief review, you should go back after the session is over and in the video library, go to the cerebellum. I discussed very leisurely about 45 minutes about nicely with all pictures and everything about the cerebellum. 
my whole job is to stimulate you to go back suppose you got working knowledge okay you feel this much is enough you don't need to go back to the video library to review okay but cerebellum is the topic of the aims need pg examiner which you have to be 100% sure doctor 